Today I'm going to give you some tips on how to tie and teach the bowline. And a lot of people use the story of a rabbit, a hole in the ground in the tree to visualize the bowline and to teach the bowline. And I think that's a great story, so I'm going to use the same story today, but I'm going to give you a little bit more detail and a few more tips. Now remember, it's all in the setup, so we're going to start by setting it up correctly. So here's my bowline. And as you can see here, you're trying to make a loop in the end of your rope. So remember, that's your goal. The other thing you can notice about this bowline is that it's made of two loops that cam on each other. My tail's a little short, but two loops that cam on each other. You've got this loop around here, the collar or the life jacket, because it kind of looks like a little person in a life jacket. And you've got the belt, the, that loop. So the two loops pull against each other, and that's what keeps your bowline tied. So if you're trying to make a loop in the end of your rope, first I want you to visualize that loop. And here I've laid it out on this, this cushion here. So if we're gonna use the rabbit story as a teaching method, which is a great teaching method, it's very memorable, you have to start by making the rabbit hole. Now there's a lot of ways you can make the rabbit hole, but there's only one correct way to do it. So for example, if you said make a loop in your line, you have to remember that this is not a loop. A loop actually crisscrosses, and here's the correct loop. Now how do I know this one's correct? Because it's on the inside of my greater loop that I'm trying to make, and because this part we're going to imagine as the tree, if we've got a bunny rabbit, a hole in the ground in the tree, we're going to imagine this part as the tree, and the tree's roots go underneath the ground. This is the hole in the ground. It goes underneath. So you can see that this part crosses underneath. So let me show you of a loop that might not be quite right. This wouldn't be right. It's on the outside and it doesn't cross underneath. So we don't want to make that loop. Um, another one that we don't want to make is this one. Yes, it is on the inside, but the part that we're calling our tree, which is always the standing, always the standing part, not the working part, crosses on top. So we want to make sure to set it up correctly every time. It is all about the setup. If you get the setup right, you're on the right track. If you get the setup wrong, no matter what you do correctly after that, it's not going to be right. So let's visualize it this way. Now once you've got your loop, you can just pinch it here so you don't lose it. Then we're going to imagine this, the very bitter end, to be our bunny rabbit. And the bunny rabbit is underground. He lives underground, right? So he comes up the rabbit hole from the underside, and we've already decided that this is the tree. So the rabbit comes up the hole. Now here's where I see another frequent mistake, is that people think it's a knot, so let's tie it tight. Well, already there, you have to remember that you're trying to make a loop in the end of your rope. So you want to maintain that loop so you don't pull it tight. The rabbit comes up the hole, goes around the tree. And there's often where mistake number two is, a lot of times I see people go around the tree this way. If we go around the tree this way, we're crossing over multiple lines to get there. Let's keep our bunny rabbit lazy and go the easiest, quickest way around the tree. And then he dives back down the hole. He doesn't come back up the hole. He's already come up it, so he has to dive back down the hole. Then you pull the rabbit and the tree away from each other, and the two loops cam on each other, and there you've got your loop in the end of your rope. And again, it looks like a, life, a little person in a life jacket with the waistband on. Let me show you another common mistake that I see. If you do decide to come up the hole and go around the tree the other way, it's not the end of the world. It'll still probably hold together, but you've got your tail on the outside. And like I said, it's not the end of the world. The problem is this could get caught on things maybe if it's dragging across the deck or something like that. And it's just style points. You know, you wouldn't just iron the front side of your shirt and not the back side of your shirt. So you might as well do it right, do it with style, make sure it looks good, and that it's perfect. Why bother tying it if it's not perfect? Okay, I'm gonna break it down for you one more time. We'll take it slow once again. Remember, it's all in the setup. So if you're trying to make a loop in the end of your rope, I'm gonna first visualize that loop. So I'm tying my bowline right here to make this loop in the end of my rope. 
I'm gonna remember the story of the rabbit, the bunny, or the bunny rabbit, the tree, and the hole in the ground. And first start by making the hole in the ground. Just like that. And how do I know that my hole in the ground is correct? I know it's correct because it's inside my loop and because the tree's roots go underneath the ground, therefore I've turned my loop the right way. And I'll just pinch here to hold it tight. Then, I've got my bunny rabbit. He's gonna come up the hole, go around the tree, and he goes back down the hole. And I'm not pulling this tight. I'm not pulling this tight, I'm maintaining that loop. He's gonna go back down the hole. Then I pull the rabbit and the tree away from each other. And this tightens up here, and I've still got my loop. There's your bow on. So that isn't the only way to tie the bow on. There's a whole bunch of other ways. Uh, but I think that if you learn it once, one way, and practice it a lot, then you'll start to get used to how the lines turn around each other, and you'll be able to figure out all the other ways all on your own. And the important thing is, is that um, instead of just learning you know, make a loop up the hole around the tree. If you really learn how the loop is supposed to be turned, then you'll be able to tie your bowl in facing this way, facing this way, from this direction, from that direction, all over the place, because you'll be able to see the relationship of the bigger picture with this, the details of the, the loop and the rabbit and that sort of thing. So this was my jib sheet, and oftentimes we put stopper knots at the end of our jib sheet. I wanna give you one quick tip a lot of times people use a figure eight knot, which I think is a great stopper knot. It's better than an overhand knot, and the reason it's better than an overhand knot is because when you get a lot of tension on it, you can still untie it by bending it like this. An overhand knot, um, when you get a lot of tension, becomes really difficult. You'd need a marlin spike to untie it, or maybe, maybe that even won't work. So a figure eight knot is a good knot to, for a stopper knot at the end of a jib sheet, but my tip today is instead of putting it at the end, put it two feet from the end, like about here. And the reason for that is if the jib were to run out and this were to go all the way to the black, you'd still have a couple feet to get your hands on it and pull on it and retrieve that sheet. If you had the knot right at the end of your rope, you'd be working with just an inch or two and two fingers to try to grab it. So give yourself some space. Okay, the bowline is a great knot, but there are a few more knots that I think are actually more useful on a sailboat. We only use the bowline aboard a Rasanante for one or two things, but we use a few other knots a lot more often. And you can find out about those at this link. This is a great video. Check it out, let me know what you think, and tell me your favorite knot.